What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 56 of the Trainer Scoop podcast. Today, I'm very, very excited to be joined by Mr. Ricky Bruce. Ricky, just go ahead and say what's up to the people, my man. What's up, guys? How's it going? Dude, I appreciate you hopping on the podcast. Um, you know, regrettably, completely regrettably, I've, I've seen you around and known you for like almost 10 years now. Um, Always from, pa like passing because like from the same area. So it's like, like, yeah, I've seen him before. And then like it took till like in Columbus for us to see right, each other. Right. You know? Yeah. So Ricky and I went to the same YMCA, Champaign County YMCA shout out. Yeah, um, shout we were probably still in high school. Like I was yeah. like a sophomore, junior when I started. Um, yeah. And then and then kind of like I'd always seen him in there training hard with your dad, bro. You guys were getting it. Dad. He's the one who got me in there. I was like, I was like 13, 13, 14. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, from there. Yeah, yeah. Cause I I kind of like you saw that. I think I remember you saw that I had an Urbana sweatshirt on at 614 in Hillier. I was like, Urbana. I was like, no one just like casually wears it like as if they got it somewhere from a friend. So I'm like, I gotta <laughs> ask it. I was like, so then, yeah. Yeah, then we kind of like reconnected and just talk every once in a while since, but I'm really excited to get into a little bit more in depth about you, what you do, um, and especially coming off this win that you just had. Uh, was it the first show that you competed in as well? First show, first show. Yeah, man, that's yeah. huge. That's really cool. I've been so, talking about it for a while and I just decided to d jump into it. Honestly. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And I mean, we were all thinking like, when the fuck is Ricky going to compete? <laughs> I was like, and it took like multiple people too, like just saying, just jump into it, just do it. And obviously starting 16 weeks out, I was like, cool, we'll do it. And then one of my, a couple of my training partners was like, just do it, dude, just start now. You're 16 weeks out, start now, jump into it. Like get your feet wet. Yes, sir. What, 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 the worst that can happen is you learn from it. So mm -hmm. that's, you know. man, I wish I had that, like, especially cause I started out doing powerlifting. And I just kept putting it off, putting it off. And yeah. I was like, ah, I'm not, I'm not going to be strong enough. Or I was like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if competing's for me. And at the end of the day, you always have a good time and you learn. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, that's a great mindset to have. Uh, but yeah, real quick before, before we get into some questions, just a little bit more about Ricky. So obviously we already, we already hit it. Competitive bodybuilder, uh, former collegiate wrestler. And uh, you said you're currently a biology student, or that was your degree? No, I was a, I was a bio major. Okay, sure. gotcha. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to eventually go back and go for master's, most likely, or something like that. But that's something that I'm going to jump back into as well. So I got you, bro. Yeah, great background to have for this kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. That's that's a good good combo. Um, but yeah, man, let's get into some questions if that sounds good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you mentioned that you got into lifting pretty young, like 13 years old. Um, was that like through sports or was that all through your dad? Like, how did that all shake or how did that all go down? It's, it was well, it started like primarily because of like football, like I played football and I wrestled growing up. Like, that's what I did growing up all through whatever. And uh, like my dad was big into lifting and he was always going to the gym when we were little kids. Like he'd drop us off for practice and then he'd go lift. And then after his lift or after. And he'd get done real quick and then come back and pick us up. But, uh, like I always saw, I knew he did it and was like, that looks pretty cool. And then like pretty much eighth grade freshman year is like rolling around. And, uh, I was like, man, like I wanted to, I wanted to do it. And all the kids, like everyone in my grade and kids, you know, friends I had in the grades above me were doing it. And, he was not about to let me go in blindly and just hurt myself. So like, he honestly like started me out. Like he told me like, I wasn't allowed to go just lift. Like he started me out. If you're going to do it, he's like, you're going to get good. Like you're going to get familiar with your own body. Like you're going to do, be doing primarily more like calisthenic stuff. So like he allowed me to just do like push ups, sit ups, pull ups, stuff like that. Uh, just to start and like build my base first before jumping into any free weights or anything like that so like at the time it's like dad that's not cool like everyone's lifting weights everyone's bench pressing everyone's freaking in the squat rack like that's cool you do that why can't i do that but he's like just trust me start slow just do it and uh then like then he started taking me to the y showing me a bunch of stuff and it's kind of just like blossomed from there 
but primarily sports related. It was for sports initially. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, dude. Like, I think my dad did a very similar thing, which like looking back on it, he, I feel like, uh, you know, because your dad obviously had a background big, he's probably still is big. If we're being honest, he is, um, he is, he's, 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 he's coming down. He's like in his like cut face. He's, he's, he's losing weight right now, but, uh, like okay. just for, like, like health and wellness, but he's Hell still yeah. like, he still lifts. My brother still lifts. He goes to the gym with my brother and whatnot. Hell yeah, dude. That's, that's dope. Yeah. My dad, I feel like he probably didn't know as much. So we were kind of just like out there in the, in our little, like you went to the gym that you, like way back when we had like yeah. the Kmart concrete plastic encased weight set with the bench yes. and shit. Yes. We, were doing, we were doing sprints. We were doing bench, like calisthenic type shit. So yeah, I feel that those are like great memories to have. That's dope. Yeah. You don't think about it as much at the time, but then you're like so grateful. Like now that you're like, dang, like that allowed me to, that like made me like you fell in love with that process before anything crazy, like anything on for social media was huge and things like that. Like you mm -hmm. fell in love with that first, like you wanted to get good at that. Yeah. So, cool. You know, dude, that brings up such a good point that you just mentioned. That. I'm glad you mentioned that. So back, like, you know, what, what would it have been like 2008, 2009 for you? And then like yeah. more like 2011 for me, yeah. but like, it wasn't as big on social media, like maybe a little bit on YouTube, but, um, do you think that's really like a good or a bad thing, which is a hard statement to make, but um, what are your thoughts, man, with like so many kids getting into lifting now because of social media? Well, like at the time, like when we started, like there wasn't a whole lot of other outside influence rather than just your friends, like your friends did it or like you, like, remember we were at the, like the tail end of like when you could still like go to kroger or walmart and they had magazines like the very very tail end of them having like muscle mag flex and mm -hmm. like men's health and fitness whatever like mm -hmm. all the you know people on that like uh i think it was a, a good thing i don't necessarily think it was a bad thing that we didn't have social media at the time we just didn't have it so it was like uh yeah it was like it was good because it allowed us to have another reason to do it other than just like, because everyone else is doing it as far as uh, because you're surrounded by it on a phone all day long or whatever, like you're not consumed by that initially. So you're just doing it because you're wanting to get good at it and want to do well in sports and your coaches are telling you to do it. So like it gives you another incentive to do it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like a, it's a double edged short. It's a double edged sword for sure. Because yeah. like, I'm sure social media has gotten a lot of kids into the gym. You know, they see like those videos on Instagram of like Chris Bumstead hitting a flex and they're like, damn, I want that. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you know, that comparison is like the thief of joy. So you always see that and we'll get more into that later, I'm sure. But yeah. like you see these uh, just genetic specimens and you're like, fuck, why can't I have that? And then you might yeah. quit. So it's I just want kinda... that now, you know, I want that, you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, so back in that day, did you like, obviously you love training. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you like it more than the sports that you were engaged in? Or was it just like a really good relationship between the two? I liked it. I, it, because it wasn't, it was sport related, but because it wasn't uh, directly affiliated, like you're not competing in, in, in anything lifting wise. So uh, it was at the time when you're young, it's fun to, to lift weights and get stronger and BS with your buddies. Like it's cool. Uh, but eventually, uh, like I always had like the back of my mind, like this would be cool to do even after, cause I know I can do it after, like after sports, because there's, there is an end to sports eventually. Like there, you know what I mean? Unless you're going to the league, there's a, there's an end to sports. So like, uh, I always had in the back of my mind and like, uh, probably took off even more when my dad took me to the Arnold when I was younger. It's like, dang, these guys are like making a living doing this. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, or just like seeing all these like genetic specimens. You're like, dang, these like, you really see how far like the human body can go when you, these guys are like, everyone's a freak. Everyone's crazy. So it's like something like I had in the back of my mind and like, you, cause we're right here in Ohio, you know, we're right here by Columbus. So it's like, uh, the Arnold's in our backyard. So it's like, dang, like when, when people talk about going to the Arnold, they're like, you ever been to the Arnold? Like, yeah, I'm actually, it's like, if you're out of state and they're like, Ohio, yeah, it's like where the Arnold's at. And you're like, yeah, it's like right in our backyard. 
Yeah, dude. The, you know? the most clutch thing. Because, yeah. you know, we both went to Ohio State, too. You could yeah. just swipe your fucking student card and take the bus down to the convention center. Literally. So nice. It is. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm definitely interested to hear, like, just about how wrestling took you. Because you uh, you wrestled for, what, was it like two, three years? I did. Uh, I, uh, re- uh, I wrestled at uh, Heidelberg University before I transferred to OSU. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's really where, like, I spent the bulk of my time, like, wrestling in college. And uh, it was uh, something, like, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I loved it, honestly. And it was, like, lifting was, like, my second outlet because, you know, you build, build, build over the summer. And then, you know, fall, wintertime kicks in and then you start, like, cutting or you start, like, training for wrestling and then, like, it's not like you lose progress, but it's like you, you start cutting back down. You start withering back down. So like, uh, uh, it's like at one point you're like, man, it would be nice to like just keep like building on this progress I made over the summer, but infinitely. Mm-hmm. So like that gets in your mind, like uh, like just you, I wanted you wanted to see like how uh, like what you could do if you had like full time to just lift and things like that. So yeah, gotcha. it's probably for like. Uh, strength and you know endurance performance for wrestling initially yeah 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 i a see little bit of a different mindset of lifting it's a di- little bit you know it's, it's different lifting it's more like cross training in a way yep yeah yeah dude because you got to be so physically prepared for the this extremely demanding sport wrestling yeah it's maybe yeah. i don't know everybody says their sport's the toughest sport but i think like wrestling is fucking tough like it, it's up there man as far as like what you can do like from a young age growing up like it's like it like it builds a lot of character it puts a lot of like value on like yourself and like how you carry yourself as a person and just like taking wins and losses mm-hmm. solely on you. like accountability is huge yeah yeah man so like my friends in high school like mike morgan comes to mind um yeah. and, and i know just in general like i don't know if you had to do this but in general in wrestling you had to do some weight cuts at times so, like, did that kind of prepare you for the prep that you just underwent or, you know, dieting in general? Or did you uh, did you think one was harder than the other? Uh, how is the relationship between those two things? Uh, I knew. It's funny because I've talked about this a lot with like some of my uh, friends who do compete in, in bodybuilding and things like that who didn't wrestle. So, like, they don't have the other this other side of it. And I was like. Uh, like the best way I can describe it is like cutting weight for wrestling is more like a sprint. Cause you're cutting weight within like a week's time, like a week's, like literally, you, you know, you might be cutting 12 pounds, but you're cutting it in a, a week's period. You're not cutting over a 16, 14, 13 week period. It's like bodybuilding's cutting or getting like contest uh, ready is like a marathon. Like, mm-hmm want to be grueling like take your good days with your good days and like make your bad days better but it's like uh that's the best way i can describe it wrestling is like it's going to suck really really bad for this next six days but just gut it out and then you'll be good you'll be able to eat on the weekend like you know after the tournament so like yeah or the meat and bodybuilding is like you're like taking two steps forward one step back two steps forward one step back you know with refeeds and stuff so like that was is a different a different type of challenge because like you're just in the process for so long mm-hmm. uh, but both i would I, it's hard to say i can't tell you if like one was harder than the other in the time like in the moment because like if you're you know cutting weight for wrestling and you're doing you know hit training or you're just trying to get pounds off you're just in some grueling sessions for you know, 30, 45 minutes or two hour practices uh, for that amount of time. You might do extra work too. Like in college, like you're expected to do extra work outside of that. But uh, bodybuilding, it's like, you just see yourself slowly start coming down. You're checking the scale slowly off. You know, it's it's a different type of monster, but I was like, it prepared me a little bit because I knew how the suck would feel mm-hmm. a little more in a way to where it wasn't like, what is going on? Like, and listening to your body like when your body's like 
I need this. And you're like, no, you don't necessarily need that yet. Just yet. You don't need this cheeseburger just yet. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it was it, just two different types of monsters, but they're both like equally like rewarding, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it, dude. That was well phrased. Uh, funny story on the aside, like talking about the sprint side of cutting weight for wrestling. So yeah. one time I think we were like, we were probably like juniors in school and Mike came over for the night. We were just bullshit and hanging out. And he's like, dude, I got to cut weight for this meet tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, man, word. Like, what do you want to do? Do you want to like go out and fucking like run or something? Like, what are you going to do? And he's like, no, I'm going to take these uh, laxatives. Oh. So my guy was shitting all night, like all night, all night, bro. In misery with your stomach turning. Yeah. Oh. I would just, I would just get up and like roll out, roll over in bed and see him like over in the bathroom that was close to my room. <laughs> and then my dad used that bathroom too so it's like 6 30 in the morning and he walks out and he walks in on mike taking his shit and he's like oh sorry mike and mike's like oh it's all good it's all good just been here all night like 10 hours it's okay yeah. <laughs> dude it's brutal so i know i know both have their challenges most definitely i, I, I never did use laxatives but i know some friends who, who've used them and i've seen like some tournaments like where and like not to go that far but like i've seen i've seen it be worse when like if you're like wearing like a, a white singlet and you're still getting the laxative side effect <laughs> like throughout the day you know what i mean like oh, I've, shit. I've seen kids at tournaments and you're just like oh man like they don't even know or they do know i don't know but like you're like i don't want to be i don't want that to happen to me so that's awesome bro that's <laughs> oh, that's hilarious shit okay so after uh after a couple years wrestling at Heidelberg then uh OSU was the move you know you were down in Columbus which is kind of like the fitness scene for I mean honestly big in the Midwest uh, uh, it might be like the fitness capital of the Midwest or whatever whatever you want to say um so what did it look like after wrestling and then starting to take training real serious honestly uh yeah I mean not only do we have like bodybuilding pretty prevalent here and then i mean you've got west side here you've got rogue who makes everything for everyone you know you so like everyone's got like all the e even inky dinky gyms that you have around here uh, inky dinky is and not well known but smaller uh they've got brand name rogue equipment because they can get it they can go pick it up like uh so like you've got like access to a lot of cool places to train uh and initially coming here that was kind of like on my mind like i still wanted to wrestle but because i still like i was still able to body like my body was able to but like in the back of my head like something was telling me like just like and i got a job at a gym when i when i started uh came here as a student i got a job working at a gym so i was surrounded by it even more which gym uh power shack gym over in Hill. oh yeah 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 yep, yep so i worked there for for a little while and uh, uh so you're surrounded by that even more on the outside of like being a student and after a while it's just like like it's like that bug in your ear it's like just try it just do it just see how it goes and i was already eating kind of like a bodybuilder not really but like your standard what i thought was bodybuilding diet you know what you think of as a bodybuilding diet like you know your chicken rice your your, your, your meat rice meat and potatoes i was starting to do that already and Salt like changes pretty quickly because I wasn't starving myself anymore every four month period, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so like, that's where it kind of took off. Then obviously you go to the Arnold and you get a little more ex motivation. You're like, Oh, this is pretty cool. Like this is, you know, so that was where it kind of blossomed from there really like 2016, 2017 to now. Yeah. Is when it really kicked off. Like, okay, like let's try it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. And I feel like uh, over those years, you've had some pretty cool, um, you know, places to train. And yeah. just like, I mean, honestly, so for those who don't know Ricky, like, he's kind of that dude in terms of like, Urbana, Champaign County, like, everybody knows Ricky as a strong motherfucker, big motherfucker. That's just what it is. I'm gonna hype you up like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I feel like other people took notice of that as well, even in Columbus, which is pretty cool to say. Uh, so like, what were some of like the standout memories for you throughout those, you know, time periods of, uh, of training with people, training at different gyms and, and that sort of thing? 
I would say definitely. Well, when I first started, uh, I was lucky enough when I first started, when I was working at Power Shack, uh, really wanting to get into the bodybuilding thing. Like uh, I had a, an older uh, bodybuilder who didn't compete anymore. Uh, shout out to Travis. His name's Travis. He was a bodybuilder here in Columbus, uh, a local guy, but he uh, still like even retired lived the life, walked the walk of a bodybuilder. And like, I got a lot of like mentoring from him initially on how to like, just like get the basics down, you know, check your boxes every day, uh, what you need to do. Cause bodybuilding is 24 seven, you know, around the clock thing. Uh, so seeing him do that, you know, and he was established in his own right, you know, he, you know, competed at multiple national level shows. He beat, you know, John Meadows, RIP, love John Meadows. Uh, he, you know, had notable wins over him and uh, then eventually was pretty cool going out over to American Barbell. He was friends with John. And uh, so getting to meet John, talk to John and train with John briefly was really, really awesome. Uh, and another guy uh, by the name of James, uh, who was really, really good friends with Travis, another bodybuilder who was still competing at that time. James was getting ready for, uh, I think, Masters Nationals. And so like, I had like that direct uh, influence right then and there, like, oh, sweet. Like these guys, like a lot of good guidance early on when I started wanting to do it, a lot of like good, good uh, advice like in my ear, trying to not steer you down like the wrong path of like burning yourself out or just taking it for what it is and just working hard day in and day out because that's what it's expected, you know? Uh, but that was really, really notable at that time. And then uh, eventually uh, me and I don't know if you know, uh, Dylan. Yeah, who, yeah. Uh, is one of my good friends I used to live with. We actually uh, both had a, a friend named Joe, Joe Sullivan, who's still he just Joe just broke his own all time squat record. Uh, Joe was able he brought us out to uh, Elite FTS in London. And so we got to train there with Dave Tate, which was super cool. And like 80% of my friends are powerlifters, 20% actually are like lifters and bodybuilders. So like, I always had like the powerlifting influence early on. And even my old English teacher uh, was a powerlifter. Yeah. Uh, what is his McNutt, Mr. McNutt? Rob McNutt. Dude, yes. he's cool as fuck. I met he's him once awesome. at Kroger in Urbana and we were just yeah. talking and talking and talking. I was like, this guy's cool as fuck. Yeah, right. I still talk to him. He was, he was, <laughs> it was cool. Cause I, he was, uh, he was my English teacher in eighth grade. So like, he like had like, I started to lift during then, like started getting into it. And like, I knew he was a power lifter. So he'd like talk a little bit, but then he actually ended up uh, moving up to high school and uh, teaching me uh, when I was a junior. And by that time I was really into it, you know? Uh, so like, then we could actually just talk for long periods of time. Uh, and I still talk to him this day. I talked to him the other day, uh, was chatting with him and he just uh, was another like, early like really really close influence and someone I could talk to about it uh which was really cool and yeah it just basically from there uh a lot of cool memories uh training and getting to know being close to like a lot of these people that like, you see like you've heard stories about like you know super cool stories about and like you know people saying nothing but nice things about them you're like well now I get to know these guys on a personal level and it's just super cool it's like super fulfilling but it makes you like pretty damn hungry like to like do something of your own mm -hmm. so, yeah i definitely take those memories like not for granted what you know whatsoever yeah dude that's really cool uh definitely learned some things there about you man um where to start with all that yeah so, oh, side note, dude, I was, uh, I was out at Dragon Slayer this past weekend and I was like, fuck, maybe I'll see Joe. Cause I used to just be like, what's up at six yeah. and yeah. I didn't see him. He's probably taking some time off cause he just squatted a literal fuck ton. Yeah. Yeah. So, squatted half a ton of most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's dope. So was you there, I mean, or, or not, did you just see him? Did you like, did, was he like out of town or is he just not at the gym? Cause I, 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 I want to go out there. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, I'll check it out at least, you know. Mm -hmm. Just oh, like man. A <laughs> it's an experience. It's like uh, you know, I've been to a lot of pretty dope gyms. You've you've been to a ton of dope gyms, but that one was like just the the sheer amount of IFBB pros in that bitch. 
crazy. Different. It's different. Was it? <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this is this is the standard here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's yeah. still pretty cool. Like, I felt like I I was just talking to some people and it, everybody was chill. Um, it's smaller, like most gyms. Yeah. When you see them online versus in person, a little bit yeah. smaller. Um, yeah. But the the lighting, bro. Yeah. Stupid. You, you know, Flex wasn't going to have his gym have bad lighting. Like, Flex <laughs> would not allow that, you know. It's like American Barbell has good lighting right now, but not the old one, the new one. Um, yeah. The old one has some, like, weird green tint on that shit. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it was, like, half blue. Like, you could get, like, in, the in like, uh, like certain parts of the gym where it had, like, natural lighting coming in was, like, kind of nice. But, the, yeah, it was, it, was, it was, like, a green tint lighting. You're like, I don't even know if it's, like, yeah, exactly. And the new American Barbell has some pretty nice lighting. But this gym, Dragon Slayer, I'm going to tell you what. Like, that gym's lighting is wild. Insane. And it sounds like you're in a club, like, <laughs> with the music, bro. Music it's blaring like, constantly, yeah. Oh, it's like the bass is just like, boom, boom, like, the whole time. So I just That's took my cool. headphones out. I was like, nah, we're not going to do that this time. <laughs> yeah. did you, but, you didn't need headphones, did you? Oh, I, well, like, I had them in at first because I, uh, I was doing cardio that day, too. And yeah. I was like coming off the flight. I was tired as shit. So I was like, yeah. I typically don't do cardio first because that's not a great idea in my opinion. But I was like, I'm going to yeah. wake up a little bit because I came right from the airport to the gym. I was like, I'm going to wake up, just get some steps in and then lift. And then uh, the music was just like overpowering it. And then you kind of can take in the whole gym and, and talk to people like, so it was dope. That's cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah. But let's see. We all followed. I mean, people that are passionate about bodybuilding, about training you know, for example, like John Meadows, we all follow his, uh, when he was around and doing his thing, RIP, like you said, all follow the training programs, all follow the YouTube, the books that he put out. Was there anything that you directly learned from him that really stuck out to you? Um, just with anything, life, training, nutrition, whatever. I would say, John, because like, because he was local, because he was a Columbus guy, he's like one of the first people that, uh, and when the social media era kind of took off, he was like the one that was like one of the few actually that was still like putting out lots of content and videos uh, of his own that you could directly go to YouTube and, and check out or whatever. Uh, so you see a lot, you saw a lot of him like just training, whether it was at, you know, training in Dublin, he was like over in Dublin or American Barbell or like Powerhouse downtown, now the pros gym. Uh, you saw how like easygoing he was uh as far as like just like almost acted as if bodybuilding was just another thing he did even though his passion for it was super immense uh but then like obviously like training principles and things like that all of like the different types of cluster sets and like ways to torture yourself you know I had downloaded all the old school I, you know I bought the creeping death program all his like the gamma bomb all the crazy uh you know, different, you know, modes of volume with uh, training principles that he loved. Uh, I took that and or like early on as far as uh, like soaking up as much info from that as I could. But then like, once you, once, you know, I, you kind of learn uh, the, you got to go through his, his stuff and his methods of why he does things and his videos and his educational content. Uh, I didn't really know how much uh he would like impact you like outside of bodybuilding because when i met him the first time uh it was actually at america barbell uh when i met him the first time officially i've seen i'd seen him like multiple multiple times before then but didn't want to interrupt him he was either filming a youtube video or something i just don't want to be that guy <laughs> but who he was you know and uh uh like how he carried himself like with everyone uh like his laid back but very caring attitude uh and making it like make, driving home the principles of like selflessness and like you know bodybuilding is not your life it's something you do and that was like kind of like takes you back a step like puts more things into perspective for you because like he was a family man he did he had so many endeavors like i would be going and i'd be going to vince's muscle shop here in, you know in columbus and getting his old recovery factor X, his intro workout, because like, he was like one of the, the 
the sole few who like blew up the intro workout thing, like and how uh, helpful an intro workout can be. And so I was like going there, uh, buying old recovery factor X. Uh, that was super cool. Uh, but yeah, just his like impact of like on people who didn't even know him, no one, people would say nothing but nice things about him. And like, that's like the kind of like impact you want to leave on people. Uh, yeah. You know, it, when, when he was still around, uh, still like no one had a, a bad word to say about him, nothing, but, you know, awesome things and like things that he's taught them, not even, not even coaching them just like on the side or being friends with everyone or, or, or knowing everyone, uh, the connections he made and the people he, he touched was just awesome. Like that's like the kind of impact and legacy, like you'd want to leave like that. It was just more like, it just struck home there tenfold uh, over any educational training content he could provide diet nutrition anything so that was even cooler because it goes beyond lifting or working out in general mm -hmm. which was yeah yeah dude that's uh that's a really good point like i think um that's like that if i didn't know john so i can't even say like i saw him same as you like never yeah. never yeah. introduced myself so he didn't know me i didn't know him but like you just say, Hey, what's up at American Barbell? Or like, I saw him at the Arnold ones in like 2016 or 20, no, yeah. 2017. Cause he competed in 2016, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He did. One, right. I, I, yeah. I, um, I, 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 is that where he turned his, he got his pro card? I think so. Yeah. 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 So it was probably 2017. Um, and yeah, you just notice like he gave people the time of day. That's something I'm always trying to do too, because like, there's just a lot of, uh, I mean, lonely and like hurt people. And, you know, regardless of if working out might help them out in life, like having someone that's nice to them is always going to be substantially impactful in their life. And that's just such a huge thing that he was about. Um, you see the returns just like karma, good karma, and yeah. you see the returns in business and it's just a great way to live. So that's like a great point, man. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up there. Well, it speaks volumes. It speaks, you know, it's it just like it speaks for itself when like you can leave that behind and 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 people still like admire you. Like that's that's awesome. Like mm -hmm. you know, it, it, un unintentionally, he was just a good person. Yeah, yeah. So, like you know, that's very, very, uh, very impactful, man. And rest in peace once again. All right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, dude um definitely i'm also interested to hear like did you did you learn any cool things or, or just learn any training techniques any any philosophies from elite fts i did uh it's funny because like i can hear dave talking right now in my head uh yeah it was i did a lot getting again you know a majority of the people in there were powerlifters uh either getting ready for a comp or just trying like you know are, were retired or had a lot of knowledge in that industry, but then Dave being surrounded by John so much, you've got like so much knowledge that's bleeding out of him uh, or like Dave's own knowledge himself, you know, he's a book of knowledge. So like, that was a big thing. Uh, really that there at Elite FTS, it instilled a lot of things that I was doing already right, just to keep doing them and, and be better at. Cause at the end of the day, like who doesn't love lifting heavy? Like that's, awesome like it's fun you know so like uh laying like the groundwork for like if you want to you know put on size or just like improve your physique or you're wanting you know to any of that like put your body under like uh extreme like distress with you know heavy loads and things like that get you know just getting acclimated to that uh it was instilling a lot of like things that i was doing right that i had was surrounded by powerlifting friends like I was already doing mm -hmm. wanting to lift heavy but like then uh, being able to like adjust them as needed or uh all the different types of like accommodating resistance that Dave gets so savvy with when he's doing his chains with his bands or he's reverse banding something you know you know loading a top end of something so you can get the most out of it all his crazy maniacal little things Some like wild that shit dude <laughs> wild oh and it, you're like whoa like it, you know it opens your mind like dang that could actually and you do it and you're like, oh, this feels great. Like, I'm going to keep implementing this in my training. I might, I might run this for like a mesocycle or, or, you know, or something. You're like, perfect. Yeah. It was cool. Nice. Dude. Yo, 
uh, when I, cause I don't know if you remember a lot of my, a lot of my equipment was from elite FTS. Yeah. And, uh, so I went out there just to like, say what's up to Matt and everything. And he, I was like, yo, can I try this hack squat? Cause it's like the legendary hack squat. Yeah. For me, that motherfucker, just the sled was heavy, bro. Like yeah. that shit was yeah. crazy. So when you see people load it up, you're like, dang, this is really heavy. That the hack squat or like the, uh, the dual ISO leg press that you can yeah. you know, do together or by itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, as one platform that thing is a monster on its own too you can get sadistic with that Dude. you know what i mean like it's awesome i think there's there are two of the i would say the most well built out unnecessarily well built out maybe even machines yeah. i've ever seen in my life so and, and it and like you i mean you have you know you i remember like uh doing your lap pull down you got the elite fts lap pull down like uh like it's also made for, you know, taller guys. So if you're mm-hmm. taller, guy, like, you know, like the actual, the, the machine itself is taller. So like you can actually get like the full range of motion or you get the full stretch. If you're, if you've got long arms and things like that. Yeah. So like all their stuff is like just super sturdy and like well-built, like with all lifters in mind, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. If, you know, one day when I have my own gym, like the Lee FTS is like one of the first people, like that's yes, going to be in the repertoire for sure got some some great lessons learned along the way i feel like that's just like a, a kind of like side benefit of lifting is like there's so much like self-development in there too so so it's, it's dope to hear all the different things you've uh, experienced so far so far yeah so far so it's and like you, you won't you'll never stop learning so that's what's cool about it you know like you can never stop learning like that's like a big takeaway that like even older guys will tell you like don't you know Oh, don't be open to or don't close your mind off to learning new things yeah yeah you know? yeah man i'm curious um what training looked like up to the competition what's what's training looking like now um a little bit of that x and o chat as fuad mm-hmm. says on the bro chat tell me about it bro uh well pr- training didn't change much i've always been like i've been a big fan of like the low volume, high frequency, kind of like a, like DC type split, like mm-hmm. really the past two and a half, three years has been lots of like DC training. Every now and again, I'll implement like some of like Meadows is crazy, you know, uh, cluster sets or well, Steven, Scott Stevenson does them too. So the crazy cluster sets with training or, you know, myo reps and all crazy things like that, that they mm-hmm. have, you know, but a lot of the uh, primary training up, uh, for the comp was, you know, the heavier style, uh, training, uh, basically lots of like a DC modified split for me, uh, the heavy intense training with basically, uh, lots of rest, pause, utilization, stuff like that. Uh, earlier on when I had more energy, yeah, I threw like the, the Widowmaker sets in, you know, the grueling, you know, 20 plus, you know, reps with something that would, would end your, end, end your workout but uh mm-hmm. or in that exercise uh but it was more of like like the old school dorian type approach with but you know the dc style training split trudell split yeah uh, hell yeah dude closer closer up to the comp was more like uh virtually the same only the past the last two weeks it changed a little bit uh just because my legs were kind of really far ahead Hmm. and i you know uh as far as like they weren't lacking uh so but my up to be more complete i wanted to keep my upper full uh because if i i didn't sacrifice any on my legs but if i had to it could i had room for it to to sacrifice uh, a little bit of like fullness in my legs uh to keep a little more fullness in my upper body Mm -hmm. uh so like i would be more like the last week was like kind of like pump stuff i stopped doing you know legs a week out just to let inflammation, you know, die down a little bit, uh, to keep them crispy for stepping on stage. And, uh, it, pre- it pre- pretty much stayed the same, like, you know, three, four exercises, you know, per muscle group of, of like big groups, uh, and like around a five ish day training split mm-hmm. around five days, uh, because of work gets crazy. Sometimes you got to modify it if you're super, super busy, but ideally like five days and I'll, that was perfect. Nice, nice. So, like, take me through what would like a pull day or like a back focus day 
look like from a broad spectrum? You don't got to give away all the secrets, but like, what are some of like the movements? Let's say you're like, like uh, eight to 10 weeks out, like fatigue isn't super high. You still can put some, you got some food in, you can still put some great effort in. Um, What did that look like for you? Back wise, if I was doing like a pull day, because it, it being a DC split, it was kind of like modified push pull than a weakness day or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. So everyone loves deadlifting. I love deadlifting. Mm-hmm. You know, who doesn't love deadlifting something heavy, pulling something heavy off the ground? So like, I would start. You know, with deads. Uh, primarily start with deads. I you know work deads or RDLs. I would exchange the two. You know, every other week I do a dead or an RDL. And uh, just because I love doing both of them. And obviously, if you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot, you can't do two in one session. No, or, you, know, you can't go, uh, you know, max effort uh, twice in one week, you know, with a dead end and RDL. So, like, I do uh, work up to, like, a heavy set of, like, six to eight on deads. And then maybe, like, a back off, you know, 15, 20% down uh, back off uh, with a anywhere hitting around 10, 12-ish. Mm-hmm. Uh, set, you know, uh, extra or set, and then basically I'd call it for deads. I wouldn't do anything else after that because you're pretty taxed after that. Uh, so, so real quick for the people, yeah, what's the load looking like on that six to eight? Uh, a week or a week, four, eight weeks out. I was still like my strength didn't change a whole lot until you started getting more depleted, like mm-hmm. closer. So, like. I was still, you know, doing around, you know, uh, five plates for my set of 12 or so. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe do like, I would do like five and a quarter. So five, you know, uh, five and a quarter for my top set of six to eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, just really controlled. I'm real big on like controlling them, you know, uh, yeah. even getting a slow descent. And then uh, I'd c- come back to, you know, 495 for like my set of 12 or so. Mm -hmm. Uh, and still even then truly if i wanted to be super analytical i was still having like one rir because you can always have sometimes like one last grueling rep yeah Yeah. but like for the return right now because i wasn't in a massive calorie surplus it wasn't needed Mm -hmm. so uh i would just call it there and that was good like i got gave maximum effort there uh was fully warmed up obviously by the end of deads you're you're getting a little toasted so and then after that some type of heavy rowing movement i was like whether it be a a dumbbell usually like a dumbbell row or i was a big fan of like chest support uh dumbbell rows anything chest supported is Mm -hmm. uh, i love the chest support row if your gym has it the chest supported t-bar row i hit those this morning did you yes yes i I love those. So doing a set or two there, uh, doing a set or two there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really change the weight on that one. I'd pretty much do a set of like eight to 10. And then if I, sometimes if I wanted to, I would make it a rest pause. So like I'd shoot for anywhere between like, you know, eight to 10 reps and then call my way, you know, rest for 15 seconds and then hit another five if I can five or six and that'd be perfect yeah and then but after that then I do some t- sort of like vertical pull whether it be like because I know I'd uh, to bring my lats up and at the same time uh, I've got like a little bit of like uh, impingement uh, for external rotation so when I, I would do like a you know single arm underhand pull down or something like that or uh, actually I at the DC principle but the DC rows if you've ever seen DC rows uh, I, I did I did the DC rows uh, at your gym when I came and trained at your place. Uh, what's the theory or the principle? It's basically like uh, it's a seat, a seated row on, on any type of cable, mm-hmm. uh, but basically to where you're just uh, keeping like a neutral spine. You're kind of bent over uh, and you're basically just pulling. Uh, you can use a rope or, you know, a close grip handle, basically trying to like just pull humerus to like. Yeah midline of your body yep yep Oof. yeah do, uh, do you remember those yeah yeah i do i do yeah. now that you're saying it, i remember now yep. yeah yeah that'll get you cooked 
how good of a lat exercise it was, like biasing the lats uh, until I actually started doing them and doing them right. Mm-hmm. And you realize that, man, you don't need the whole stack on these. You can toast yourself with not that much because you're just just the lats. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like that was, a, I would do those. And then because I uh, would uh, split up a little differently, I had uh, kind of like my pull day but I didn't do any biceps on my pole day because I do biceps on chest. I normally haven't done that up until getting ready for the comp uh, until I was like 20 ish weeks out. I, I started doing that just to give my arms a little more rest and a little more volume on a secondary day. Yeah. So I do chest and biceps and then back I'd hit a little bit of triceps with, uh, but I would do back uh, a little bit of rear delt work and then triceps. I do like one or two rear delt movements. Uh, usually like uh a dumbbell, uh, rear delt, uh, you know, dumbbell, re- rear delt pole. But then I would do like a, a face pole of some sort or something. Mm-hmm. Basically, that would just I'd have a room for like one or two tricep movements, depending if I was using like uh, any intensity techniques. That would determine if I do one or two. If I'm like going, you know, balls deep on one, uh, like some crazy drop sets or whatever. I would do for triceps because that was more of like a, a little more volume for triceps anyway. So I wasn't trying to go super heavy there. Yeah. I would do that. And then basically that, that would wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's okay. That's dope. I love hearing different training philosophies. Um, before I ask my next question, um, did you have any weak points you were trying to bring up for the stage? Uh, yeah. Arms for sure. Okay. Yeah. Arms and, uh, shoulder width like actually you know like dealt with just because i knew uh because i have a little bit of bigger sweeps uh quad wise Mm -hmm. and i know to match that and to to be more complete my delts need to be just as wide and funny enough after the comp i after competing i talked to the judges afterwards that's exactly what they said oh yeah cool cool. at least i know at least i know uh and that's considered like the flow right yeah like giving okay. like the x frame the flow yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. It, it was good it, like it wasn't bad on stage uh just like if i'm if you're limb dominant and and and, and the legs or whatever, whatever my legs were dominant so like i needed to bring my arms up and i still do that's kind of like a big focus for this off season actually too now yeah i never had a problem really with like developing chest or feeling things with chest like and I think you see that amongst a lot of people who do like more high intensity splits because a lot of focus is emphasized on your big presses or your big pulls or, you know, yeah. squat, things like that. So like sometimes if you're cooked, you know, mid workout, uh, usually in, in my case, uh, you'll go through, not go through the motions, but you'll finish your arm work and kind of that'd be that so now i've got like an actual more of a dedicated day or a little more volume thrown in the split uh taken off of uh, somewhere else like i've taken uh, as many back movements uh back exercises i've taken a little bit off of certain back exercises so i can do a little more volume for biceps or triceps yeah dude vice versa i i am really interested in trying that out i might have to try out some of those principles that you just talked about in uh, the next mesocycle because you hit the nail on the head um, with you know fatigue sets in during a session and your intensity just isn't going to be there um, yeah. and I try to mitigate that I especially like and I think a lot of people can benefit from this from a more unconventional split than your classic like push pull legs maybe yeah. you're doing pull with triceps like you said because mm-hmm. it's like so so for me one of my uh, weaknesses that I'm trying to bring up are biceps. So I placed that first in my pull session today. I did, um, fuck, what did I do? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Brain fart. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I started it off with, um, so, okay, quick aside. I don't know if I told you this, but I moved to Indianapolis and I'm training at Nate Epler's gym. So he has literally everything, bro. Yeah, bro. You got to come out. I just didn't know for sure where, where, Two it was in Indy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, dude, you gotta come out. Um, are you, are you liking it out there? Oh yeah, I love it, dude. It's 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 fun. Like I'm working real close to downtown. I like the city vibe. Yeah. Um. So I missed that being in Urbana. 
working close yeah. to downtown. So I, I like during lunch break, I'll walk, walk downtown and shit, get some, get some steps in. And then like g- training at Nate Epler's gym, great environment, amazing equipment. Um, yeah. And just like fun things to do on the weekends, new, new things yeah. to see might not be, <laughs> might not be here forever. We'll have to see where I end up, but it's a good, good spot for me right now. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that far from, you know, no. where, you two know. hours from Urbana. Yeah. Like two hours over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I started it off. He has this nice, like uh, lifetime preacher curl machine. So I started off there because, you know, I'm trying to emphasize biceps. Mm-hmm. And then I went over to, he has like a, like a lap pull down. That's like two different pulleys. So I hit that. Yeah. And then uh, the t- chest supported T-bars. And then it comes time to, to hit another bicep movement. And I'm cooked from all that vertical and horizontal pulling. Yeah. And yeah. And like you said, maybe if you just throw in triceps, you know, antagonist, uh, you know, not, not involved in any of your row motions, your biceps can be fresh on another day. You really apply the the tension and the pressure there, go hard. And, uh, you know, there's no interference between your triceps and your pulling muscles. So that's a really good point, dude. I, I, I like that setup. I, I, I got it from, from BPAC, from Ben Nikolsky. Oh, no shit. Okay. Uh, a lot of his old MI40 uh, uh, plans were chest and biceps and then back and triceps. Yeah. So I uh, started implementing that, but with like uh, a higher intensity split because he's, he's a little, you know, he goes a little uh, higher into the volume spectrum. Uh, and like, I, ha- I wasn't super used to that already. So like, I didn't know, uh, I didn't want to have to like be trying to, for those of you who like, give it like, I don't, I don't want to try to be auto-regulating in the middle of a prep. Mm. Uh, with, with training intensity and things like that just trying like throwing new things into the hat that i wasn't for sure uh if this would be my weight for this or, or i wanted to keep like all the variables as close to the same as i could mm-hmm. uh, so that's why like it, it gave me more of like a lower volume high frequency so if i was hitting you know biceps via back on my pull day i'd actually be hitting them more directly you know actually yeah on my chest yeah and that's a great point still like you're still getting volume to, towards your biceps with yeah. many of those pulling movements so that's a that's a really good point and um to kind of branch off of what you said earlier too i looked at some of the the pictures from the show the other week and dude your legs were fucking crazy like i'm not trying to make comparisons and talk down on other people but like yeah. clearly they were there um yeah. so that's that's uh is, is that something that you know you're you're sort of just it's just one of your strong points or do you think any of your prior training really helped bring your legs up in the past uh like i would say like i've i've i like training legs like who doesn't like well i know a lot of people don't like training, but <laughs> like love if you love like hard training like yeah there's nothing like more taxing and grueling than like like an awful set or an awful like training session for legs because just it, you're spent mm-hmm. but, like so, like early on like in training like early on and, and lifting like leg days were my time to shine because like i loved digging deep and mm-hmm. like like getting as as crazy as i could because uh like that made me feel like the most reward like after like going to the gym like oh, i yeah i put in a lot of effort with that so like uh legs are definitely something i had never shot away from doing uh it was something i enjoyed and also like you do get like a lot of like secondhand like you get a lot of like static tension when you're like wrestling or, or football or whatnot, when you're in like a, you know, a crouch position all the time, things like that. Uh, luckily before getting into bodybuilding, I realized that like I was very quad dominant, super mm-hmm. quad dominant. And like, I actually had like a good amount of knee injuries uh, because well, I didn't know at the time, I didn't know yeah. what, why I was having so many like aches and pains and, 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 you know, uh, things like that with my knee problems with my knees because my hamstrings were lagging so much. Mm. So like, that's when like, I really started like, okay, cool. I'm going to fall in love with like RDLs and different variations of pulling movements and things like that that will like put size on my hamstrings or get them caught up on par, at least closer with my quad. So I don't have yeah. as many knee problems. And what do you know? I'm not wrestling anymore, but like, I'm still like, I don't have any like pains to this day hardly with my knees or anything so good dude nice yeah yeah dude i always like sharing those training philosophies because 
everybody has their preference and, and d- different things work, whether you're yeah. titrating volume for intensity or whatever right. it might be, but like you can always learn from somebody that has a thoughtful approach. So like definitely appreciate you sharing that. That's a big takeaway. More, more than one way to skin the cat, you know? Yeah. That's, Poor fucking cat, man. This yeah. Yeah, exactly. Is- like I, I get it. Like everyone's got their thing. If it works for you, then it works for you. I'm not going to tell you it's wrong. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I've never going to tell you it's wrong. So. Right. You know, I'm uh, I'm curious to hear about nutrition side, you know, and, and with a contest prep diet, it gets pretty wild. Like, so th- that might be kind of an anomaly, but like in general for like bodybuilding, I remember at one point, I forget if it was like a story, but like a couple of years back, you're like something about like a kilogram of rice a day. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. So <laughs> what's your strategy been over the years, dude? Uh, here, like I, I did, you know, like the vertical diet. Mm-hmm. I did stand everything's vertical diet for a while and like basically the whole agenda behind this contest prep the whole the whole time was basically it was a carb cycling approach really was what it was I didn't uh deviate fats a whole whole lot unless like I had a high carb day uh but I've got the most amount of my calories from proteins and carbs just because one that was the best for my training mm-hmm. I was going to be doing heavy loads and things like that. I needed some sort of, you know, carbohydrates in my diet. So if that meant cutting back a little bit of fat to keep me in a deficit, then so be it. Yeah. Who doesn't like eating carbs? Like I love eating carbs. Like, but uh, you feel good. That's what I'm yeah, saying right good. here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I have, I have uh, some rice cakes over here. I actually got some rice krispies too over here. But it's, I'm, I'm 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 out of season now, so I can do that. No. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I uh, big thing. Another cool thing for Meadows is now a lot of people do it and people probably done it before him but he was always preaching it was centering your carbs around training if you're having a bulk of your you know carbohydrates for the day centering them around you know pre during you know pre intra and post uh training uh and that helped me like actually not dread going to the gym because i knew i was going to get a good lift with some carbs in my system with some energy uh it didn't take away from my training sessions uh and then I would just basically like if I had, you know, meals with very, very low or no carbs, that would be more towards the opposite end of the day. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so that was basically a carb cycling approach. I didn't change a whole lot. My my meats were basically like ground chicken, chicken, tuna. Uh, every now and again, I have like some like lean turkey uh, and then like some like protein shakes if, if I needed it, if I was in a pinch. Yeah. So if I needed it. But then like obviously once carbs start backing down a little bit the further you get into prep i couldn't do rice all the time i love rice like most of the time early on i was just doing rice but like for more volume in your stomach like when you're just hungry you know if i wanted to get if i had a meal that was 30 grams of carbs uh i needed if i wanted to do that in rice that's basically like three four big spoonfuls of rice and then i'd be done so like i started doing a little more potatoes I, yeah. I do sweet potatoes too. I did sweet potatoes a lot early in the prep too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I switched to regular potatoes. Uh, I was also, I'd play around with that. Give me more like stomach volume to where I didn't feel like I was starving and water was still high the whole time. I kept water high to like a gallon and a half around two to two gallons more towards like the last six weeks. Uh, but that was basically just a big carb cycling approach. Uh, having like a refeed day when I needed it. I, Looking back, I think I could have, I pulled pretty early. I started pulling a little too much food too early. Mm-hmm. Actually, it started uh, causing me to hold more water when I was just training super, super hard in a depleted state for a little while. My, my cortisol yeah. was a little higher than it should have been. Uh, so I think for next prep, we'll just basically keep as m- many things as I can the same when it comes to uh just doing more work and still eating a decent amount of food because I started the prep at around 265. And then I stepped on stage at 238, 239. So, and a lot of it, you know, I, I still had a little bit to go if I, if I really, really wanted to, cause I still, yeah. uh, in my opinion, had a, a little bit of water on me that like Mm-hmm. It, just, it just couldn't get off but it'll come more uh, the more i diet down for contests it'll it'll come off i didn't run any fat burners either yeah i literally yeah. just had some 
liquid l carnitine that i bought at vitamin shop like that's the only fat burner i had really mm -hmm. so uh nothing like crazy directs or anything i'm sure if i used that or did that would possibly help a little bit but it's a learning process you know i think like you gave a, a great practical tip because i just finished up a diet as well and like let me tell you what there's nothing yeah dude nothing more depressing than 40 grams of rice in a tupperware so yeah. like switching your carb source which honestly i've switched it to sweet potatoes before and i like that a lot um i yeah. personally like would just chop up sweet potatoes and put some foil down and grill them with the chicken and bread yeah. so you get a little bit of the grill taste mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, I was working a lot and like when i when i could grill i'd grill as much as i could early on uh but like the grill taste would help the sweet potato because i was just doing like microwave sweet potatoes or like oven baked sweet potatoes like after a while it can get a little tiring so like the grill taste would like really amplify a little bit like i like that i would totally do that i've never tried it but i would totally do that yeah and and i like the the fact that you know you're you're honest with the fact that um you had like a little bit more to lose like a little bit of of water on the on the physique but like at the end of the day you got to keep in mind and i had the same thing in mind um on different levels yours yeah. is much higher than mine but you didn't need to put yourself through that last little bit of hell or you know possibly like getting to the point of where oh shit like health can can be slightly sacrificed here right because you were gonna win like i don't know if you knew you were gonna win you probably should never go in with that mindset but like i didn't i had no idea what to expect i was nervous as hell I yeah was super, but yeah so like for my case i did this like fat loss uh transformation challenge over the summer with this company yeah. and then they were like yo you killed it can you come out and do a photo shoot and i was like sure and I had seen the other people and I was like, I don't really need to turn it up all the way here. Like, I'll just keep in this deficit. Like, I, what was that? So you're, like, you're sitting in a good spot already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like I had like these long islands, just, you know, having some fun with life. Yeah. I had a couple of drinks um, and, and it didn't really like set me back too much. So like, I guess that's not something that I would probably sign off on recommending to people, but like something to keep in mind if you're doing these type of things. Uh, I, I originally, I wasn't going to do the Ohio show. I was actually uh, prepping for Kentucky. Yeah. So Ohio was actually uh, three weeks before. So I actually didn't even uh, like I wasn't, I was dieting for Kentucky, like pulling things for Kentucky. So I wasn't even, I jumped into the Ohio two weeks out. I decided I was going to do that two weeks out. Uh, so like there was a lot of last minute changes that, that, uh, that we did right then and there. Uh, and I think maybe had I not jumped in that early, I could have came in a little tighter during Kentucky, but I wanted to do Ohio one. It was it's home. Yeah. It's close to home. I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to do for my first show travel and have hotel expenses and all that stuff. Oh man. Yeah. So, That's and stress and financial burden. Exactly. On, on both ends, burning yourself at both ends. So like, I wanted to do that. And then like, it was cool because like uh one i knew uh the owner of uh, one of the gyms i could go to steve he won it two years ago in 2020 uh and my posing coach uh adam he actually uh won it in classic in 2019 he was the first classic winner to, to, to ever win uh, the ohio but so like he he uh and one of my training partners seth and rory they were the ones who like was like just jump in and try it like if you want to get your feet wet, jump in and try it. If if you do bad, you're you like you'll be hungrier to do Kentucky and win Kentucky, you know, or do well there. Uh, and if, but if you do well, then like if you do well enough, you it's like the it's Mr. Ohio, so you win Mr. Ohio, you know. Pretty so cool. I was like, yeah, I'll try it. I'll try it. So it was it, it worked out. Luckily, uh, like I said, there's plenty of more cards to be played. Like as far as like learning how to uh, manipulate food a little better. For my next shows my biggest thing for doing my biggest reason for even competing was to set myself up for a very good off season to work reverse diet out and have a really really good off season coming out of like a uh depleted state you know yeah that was oh, really yeah. the big driver anyway so which i'm happy it turned out the way it turned out you know yeah dude yeah i think like all things considered pretty damn good so congrats again not too bad not too bad
um, you brought up a, a question that I was going to ask you. Did you have a coach handling your nutrition and training or just posing? Uh, I, had, I had a posing coach. Uh, he, he was one of the ones who gave me the idea to do the Ohio because I was just mm -hmm. locked in for Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, Adam, he uh, actually he trains over at the Metro in Dublin, but he's been competing for a long time. And he was like, just do it, man. Just, just do it. Like, I'll be there. I, you know, I've got so, someone in the show already. I'll be there uh, and I'll help you, you know, pose and get ready. So, so you can present, you know, yourself the best way possible. And diet wise, I was really like, <clears throat> to be honest, I was like pretty much going off of, you know, Justin Harris is Justin Harris. He, his uh, carb cycling plan, he's yeah. a genius in himself but I was doing his carb cycling plan. And then uh, with that, I had the feedback from uh, two of my training partners, Seth and Rory. They were kind of like, just like in my ear, like if I needed to make adjustments cause they were seeing me every day. Mm -hmm. So like I was getting, you know, feedback off of both of them, uh, you know, whether I was on track, whether I was behind or if I was ahead, it was okay to sit there and stay. Uh, cause I just, didn't know what to expect. I had no, you know, I, I had no idea what to expect. I'd never done this before. So, uh, having those two there also helped a ton. Uh, you know, one, it just, it was, uh, very, like, I felt very secure as, as far as like I had good guidance and was able to make good decisions accordingly, uh, for, 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 for my first time. So, yeah. It was cool. It was, have, it was cool having them in my corner. I didn't have a, like a, my, I was kind of like my own, I guess I ran my own diet, but with the feedback of both of them. Yeah. That's a good setup. Um, I feel like it's a little bit of a special case just because you've had so many like good learning experience, so much experience and you have that like very like solid corner, um, yeah. to rely on. Um, uh, but that's like, that's really cool. Um, do you do any coaching yourself or do you ever plan to? I've, I've uh, trained people before, like never for like actual like comp coaching. Mm -hmm. I've trained people before uh, when I used to work at a gym and I'm actually wanting to get back into it now uh, just because I, it's a good opportunity to, I, it's, I, I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. I just got out of it for a while because I had a lot of things on my plate as far as like uh, when I went back to school and then when I was like switching jobs, uh, I just had a lot during that time and I don't want to like put stress on other people of have to, you know, stick with me through that if they didn't want to. So like, mm -hmm. I just, I stopped doing that for a while, but like, actually it's something I'm getting back into now. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, um, might as well do it now because we're talking about it, but where can people reach out to you if you're currently, if not, that's cool. No, I am. Yeah. I am. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, how can they get with you? Uh, honestly, you can contact me via Instagram, you know, uh, Ricky, uh, R-I-C-K-E-Y underscore Bruce, B-R-U-C-E on Instagram. Just shoot me a message. Let me know. Uh, you can email me too, uh, Ricky Bruce 1951 at gmail.com. Uh, but that's primarily, I mean, I've got Facebook and everything like that, but old parents use Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. But. <laughs> right. No, yeah, man. And I'll, and for those listening, um, I really do think like Ricky's, he knows his shit. He's a good coach. Like some of my clients and people that I'm friends with just will hit up Ricky be like, yo, like, what do you think about this? Or you're just like easy to talk to about these things. And you have such a good diverse knowledge that like, I feel like, like a hundred percent, uh, if you're, if you're in the market, go get with them because I think, I think you could get the people right. Um, and I'll link all that shit in the, in the description too. Yeah. If you're curious to, to get with Ricky. Um, but yeah, man, I feel like I could, uh, I could just keep asking you questions all day, but I'll, I'll end it off with, with one more. Um, and that's just like, where, where do you see yourself going in terms of competitive aspirations? Maybe you quickly hit on what this next off season will be and then what the long-term goal is. And then uh, also, you know, just with your, your goals, with yourself, your personal development, your career development, where do you see it all going? Uh, well, right now we're kind of reverse dieting out uh, for a good off season. 
I'm wanting to step on stage around, you know, 10 ish pounds heavier, just because I know, you know, being six, one ish, uh, I've got more room to fill out my frame. Uh, and if I'm going to be in the supers, uh, I, 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 doing this show, uh, doing this show qualified me for nationals this year and nationals next year as well. They've got one in the spring and they've got one in December of next year. So like, I think ideally spring would be, uh, the one I'd like to go for, uh, other, uh, NPC nationals in spring. Uh, so right now that's kind of like where our eyes are headed. Uh, they've got junior USAs, USAs and stuff like that too, that I could, you know, pop into, but uh mpc nationals next year in the spring is ideally what uh we're shooting for right now uh so i'm just basically wanting to put on more size in a in a in a, in a clean manner you know and not get sloppy in the off season just to keep everything you know well conditioned and uh just get stronger progress you know little by little each day uh and i'm wanting to uh eventually try and get a crack at, you know, earning a top spot there, possibly for like a pro card or something. I think that would be sweet, you know, to where it'd give me some sort of satisfaction for putting myself through all this for so long. So like some kind of return on it, you know, that would be cool. But right now it's just like, cool. I'm, you know, back to work we go. So uh, I'm super excited about that. And then just basically now that I'm off uh, prep, I'm not prepping anymore as far as like in contest prep. Uh, now I can actually like enjoy myself a little more. I can, you know, eat a little better or eat a little more fun. Like I can go to dinner, you know, you know, with my girlfriend or I can with my family or friends, I can go out and, and enjoy myself a little bit uh, and not just be a hermit in prep mode all the time, you know, because there's some certain weeks where like people are asking you like, Hey man, like you want to come eat? Let's go to beat up. Let's go to five guys or, and you're just sitting there and you don't want to get off the couch. So like now I can actually venture out more and, and enjoy myself a little more, especially because the holidays are coming up. So it's like Thanksgiving and Christmas, I can actually eat and enjoy myself uh, and still just basically just get back to work and uh, just Im improve in all areas. I want to bring up, you know, weak areas, of course, uh, but just uh, be a more competitive, complete bodybuilder. Uh, it's weird. I didn't like call myself I, it's, up until then people have asked me like, Oh, you're a bodybuilder. I'm like, no, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm, I, I, I lift, but I've never, cause I never competed. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I see. I've never competed, so I'm like, I don't consider myself a bodybuilder. I haven't competed. I haven't done a show yet. So like, I'm not going to throw that on there, but That's now, true. now I guess I can. So now, uh, it's like, cool. Uh, just be a more complete bodybuilder and basically, uh, come back better for next next year uh and then just continue to enjoy life and you know look for opportunities and as far as career wise and just enjoy living with my people family friends and yeah it's a beautiful thing i like it man beautiful thing yes sir well man yeah like i said i could chat your ear off all day with this shit but i know you probably have other things to do I know. Uh, we, can, so, we can do another time. We yeah, got, man. Got, yeah, dude. We got to. Um, we'll definitely be getting a part two. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited for that. Definitely get into a little deeper on some of these topics. Um, yeah. But guys, I do appreciate y'all for checking out episode 56 of The Trainer Scoop. And Ricky, once again, dude, you're a phenomenal guest. Um, please go support Ricky and just follow up with him. See, see what he's up to. See how the training and everything's going with him. Uh, once again, all those links will be in the show notes. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and leave me a review. Tell me how uh, tell me how you enjoyed Ricky filling out that Ohio State Buckeye shirt. That's what I need to hear in the in the reviews. And then, of course, on YouTube, go ahead leave a comment. Any questions that you have for either of us, go ahead like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do the do the YouTube things. Uh, but thank you all for listening, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you, brother.